The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dallas down 108, uh, well, 191 at 25,329. The S&P is down. Oh, let me just do this. The, down the 25,909 period exponential moving average is just way up there. It's going to take quite an effort to get there because look at how badly the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence is at this point. And look at the stochastic down at 40%. You remember we were talking about holding flat in the 97% area. You don't get terribly much better than that, but it can hold there. But once it starts down, it invariably goes to the single digits. I don't know if it's going to do that now, but that's what often happens. Most importantly, the weekly chart is making a peak E, made a peak E last week with a slightly 26,616 was the high of the week of the 26th of uh, January and the week of the, the 2nd of February had 26,608. Almost like a Chapman with two bar reversal, uh, just as we had in the daily chart. And that suggests that the nine period moving average where it is right now at about 25,330s going to be absolutely critical. Monthly chart made a leg E, could be a peak E if all of the, uh, February does not see a high above 26,616. Where do I think it's going? That's a tough one, but I did show this to subscribers about three weeks ago. I said this is, no, it was about, yeah, about three to four weeks ago. I said this is a template. I was completely wrong because the Dow went to an all-time high on the week of the 26th of January. Then it pulled back very sharply last week. But this is still the pattern I'm looking for, that lightning bolt pattern, the one that goes down sharply, has a bounce, gives you the pattern that I call the lowercase h pattern. This is the lowercase h of my Chapman Wave CD. Lowercase h pattern, and it's a failure pattern. It keeps going along until at some point it might make a large uh, lowercase m from the lowercase h. It just extends the arch formation. So let's see what happens there. But I suspect we're going to go down and we're going to test somewhere around uh, right here. And that is at the 14 period exponential moving average. And um, we'll see what happens. The most important support right now is at 25,003. Uh, let me just get, yeah, 310. That's the key support that we're looking at. Significant break under that starts you into, goes, it takes it into the next phase of the move. Uh, so a bunch of things I did for subscribers over the weekend, showed them my usual, uh, there we go, the triple yield chart, look at this, a huge move up in the 30-year, the white one, the brown one's the TNX, the 10-year yield, and the five-year is just screaming to the upside, I'll show it to you a little later on when I change charts, I discussed this particular uh, pattern right here. That's the iShares Wood Global Timber and Forestry ETF starting to pull back, made a high last week, but now I think it's going to make a peak. Uh, this is significant because it's been an, an absolute tear uh, all of all of uh, the latter part of 2017. And you've got HGX, the Philadelphia housing sector ETF, pulling back really sharply, made a high of 369. And it's deeply, uh, it's really very much lower right now. I'll show you the charts. Look, here we go. This is the uh, wood, is W-O-O-D. Look at this, makes a peak G, and now it's pulling back from the seven, just under, right in the 77s, now it's the 74s. Um, it's going to be, whether it closes this week under 73, 94 is the nine period moving average, where if it closes under 73.40, that's gonna be quite significant. Monthly chart is still very strong. And the HG, HGX, which is the Philadelphia housing. Oh, congratulations to the Phillies. Uh, to the Eagles. So here we are. Peak F in the daily chart makes a top on the 24th at 369.15. It's trading now at 334. 334. 60 points low, almost 20% in the housing sector, the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. That is that is big stuff. 
So, okay, now we're going to go to uh, the S&P, SPX, X. Let's just get this all out of the way, go step by step. Uh, a peak F top on the 26th at 28.72.87. It's trading now at 24.74, 27.42, I'm sorry. The line period moving average is right here at 27.29. Um, the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly chart in the peak D is at 27.44. And we're under that by about a point and a half. The week has just barely begun. Let's watch it closely. And a leg D, possibly a peak D coming up in the weekly chart. The QQQs, uh, right now the Qs are uh, up. They would up. Now they're down 81 cents at 163.81. Peak F top, peak E top in the daily at 170.95. E top in the weekly chart and only a C in the monthly chart. Watch out at 163.82. If the 162 support goes, it goes quite a lot lower. Let's go to the IWM. IWM right now, still very weak. Uh, it's trading down the dollar three at 152.79. It's gone below the key support that I was looking at. At 152.39, the low of the 29th of December. This is one of the weaker indices. It's a peak E in the F in the daily, E in the uh, day, weekly chart, and possibly a leg E going to a peak E in the monthly chart. Um, let's just do this. I had a quick question here about uh, Bitcoin. There's that pattern. I just uh, the reason why I showed that chart of the Chapman wave and my CD introducing the Chapman wave methodology of the H going to a lowercase M. Look, the H on all the 15-minute chart of Bitcoin keeps coming down below the left side, low in that H pattern, lowercase h, lower lows, lower lows, lower. Then it goes from the H to the M pattern. That portends, if it takes out the low significantly, a, at least a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. We've already done that. Now it's yet another H pattern that is trying to test at 72.15, trading right now at 72.63. We'll see if it's going to retest that low. It looks to me like it could just be real careful out there with these things. Um, let's go on. We're going to go to um, – we go, let's go to gold. Gold right now is up to at 1339. I was surprised that gold pulled back so sharply Friday. I would have thought in this, this, this environment that gold would do better. It's actually in some of the stock – gold stocks are doing very poorly. I'm watching this. It has to close to, not just over the nine period moving average of 1343. It has to close not only the high of the second of 1353.3, it has to go over the high of the first of the, the of February of 1354.3 and hold there. That'll be very positive until it does that. Chop, 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 just meandering. Uh, silver is the same thing. Silver is down right now. Uh, it was down. Now it's up 0.06 at 1677. Doesn't really look all that good. High grade copper. High grade copper is up 0.04. It's in a, in a trading band, just a trading range. I discussed that on Friday. Hey, what's really important here is look at the TLT. TLT down again, down 55 cents at 119.03. It's taken out the low of um, Friday. This is really very interesting because the um, if you look at the look at this. T and X dot X. This is the 10-year, 10-year uh, T bond yield in a leg E to the upside. Uh, sorry, F slash B to the upside. That's the characteristic of an F at this point. Leg D in the weekly chart. All I can say is that it should be bumping into resistance in the 28th. If it gets above 29.50 this week, wow, this market really could take a tumble. Um, so I'll show you the chart right now on the two-minute uh, long chart. All right. That was a 10 minute double top. All right, I'll be back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank. 
Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. So we're talking about the TNX. I just wanted to mention I did this when I did um, uh, with Tommy Jr. I joined him at 10 o'clock for the Natix uh, show. Um, and I was discussing that the 10 year Treasury note interest rate yield has broken out of a multi-decade downtrend, this dash green resistance line called the Chapman Wave Inside Track. It's been there before, but this time it, it's taken it out. But we're only a couple of days into February, so we don't know what it's going to close like. But this is significant that it took it out with strong technicals in the MACD and stochastic. But when you look at the left side, we've been here before. It's really the 30.28, was it? 30.36 30, 30 high of December of 2013 that has to be taken out. That's even more significant, the horizontal rather than the diagonal uh, resistance. A close above there says, whoa, look at the next level of resistance. Takes you all the way to the 36. Or I don't even want to talk about it because that already scare the Fed. Um, so I think what we're looking at here, yes, it is interest rates, but really it's very, oh, it's just the market needed a trigger for a breather. And uh, we've got that. We've got the dollar right now. This is very interesting. Dollar's attempting to get some kind of rally going. I think that the dollar is going to succeed in bouncing. Um, it's had this six day, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six day testing of the low that was made at 88.44 on the 26th. Let me just type that in 88.44 on one. Did I say 26? Let's call it the 26 for now. Um, and that's going to be very important because um, it's successful. It's got a leg A, then went to a peak A. Any push above this little point right here, above the high of the twin, the high of the 29th, I believe, 30th. The high of the 30th was 89.64 of the dollar. Clears that it starts a leg B, but that's really not the issue. The issue is that through this whole um, cluster formation at the bottom for the last eight trading days or so. The stochastic has made a low and is now rallying from the 26 low. The MACD from Thursday's low has been rallying and has just crossed positive. So in the Chapman Wave methodology, this is called the, almost like a restart pattern, but there's been no restart yet. This is peak A. It goes to peak B, B one penny over peak A. The, the stochastic has gone from uh, the single digits with the crossover, so that's the stochastic buy signal. 
Then the stochastic goes over 20%. We'll see where it closes there. If it closes over 20%, then in the Chapman Wave methodology, the stochastic has gone to a buy mode. But you have to have price move. We've only got a little bit of today. The MACD is about to cross positive. That's the third criteria out of four. Uh, price is the other. And I would say I would get a buy signal confirmation close to a buy mode, meaning we'll go to at least a D, but I'll only get that if the dollar buy, today's Monday, I'd say by Wednesday, at this time Wednesday, if the dollar is above 89.86, I've got a daily buy mode in place. That's going to be positive. And the weekly chart has had an inside bar from last week after the massive pullback the week before. And if it makes a new high, it doesn't have to close. I'd prefer if it closed. But if it makes a new high above 89.64 this week, that's going to be really important. And we're only 8.88 8 cents away from that. I like this. And I think gold, if you look at the gold stocks, let's just go to GG. And I haven't looked at it for a little while. Yeah, look at this pullback. This is not a great pullback. It goes to a leg. Oh, it's only a C in the daily. It didn't even get to a D. So, um, Yep, so far, this is very negative action. The daily and the weekly chart in Gold Core. Let's go to RGLD. It's one of the better ones. RGLD, price high. It made a peak D top. It's pulling back. It's high level consolidation. If GLD at 87.17 starts to trade, it doesn't have to close, but if it starts to trade under 86, I'd say, uh oh, consolidation continues in, in gold. Um, I want to continue now. EUR, USD. Euro dollar currency pair made a peak C, peak C1, C2 potential uh, phantom peak uh, top in the daily. I usually like to give a little bit of room. The weekly chart is still very strong. I wouldn't be surprised at 1.241 down a fraction right now. We actually get one little pop up above 1.2536. But how are you going to do that if you if the dollar starts to rally? So this is something to keep in mind. And the USD JPY will be the big confirmation. It was doing well on Friday. Remember we discussed that. Mm, a little bit pulled back today, but a very strong leg A at 110.001. Let's see what happens. It needs to go above 110.477. That'll be a big positive. No, it'll be a positive. A big positive is if it closes above 111.50. Uh, what have I forgotten here? Yeah, let's go to the TLT. So the TLT pulling back, it had 100. Was that uh, taken out at all? Let's see. Yeah, look at this. The TLT is trading. The 118.64 was the low. Oh, my. 118.64. Let me just type that in here because I'd just like to be up to date. 0.64. 63. No, no, 64. There you are. 1864. Um, the weekly chart is terrible. It's this monthly. Remember, we're looking at the TNX. I'm talking about the monthly pulling, pushing over the, the resistance. Well, resistance in the in, inversion is support. And the monthly chart looks like it's about to take out its low. And if that's the case, 116.79, the low, this is comparable to the cup formation. We were looking at the TNX 10-year. Now we've got the 30-year TLT, 20-year TLT, a Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF. 116.79 is the level to look at from the week of the 31st, oh, from March of, this, of last year. We're at 119.08. Got to watch this. this. This is such a critical period because we've got the potential with a, a, maybe a, a government shutdown, all sorts of things going on this week. Uh, plus, this, now the conflagration between the two parties is exacerbated. It is much worse than it's been before because now you're getting closer and closer to the 20, uh, 2017 election. I don't think the uh, Democrat Party wants to give anything away. I, I think they're going to be very reluctant to do anything with Trump. And... Within the, the party, uh, the Republican Party, Trump is he's always fighting other, other uh, um, a little like Don Quixote. Um, he's always fighting windmills somewhere. Um, we don't know whether these are just plain old windmills or whether these are real facts uh, that are going to impact the market. And that is with uh, the Republican Party having some kind of split on the memo, on their interpretation and all that. It just makes it a little bit harder for them to be united, to be able to to really forcefully, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, Thursday, it's a potential government shutdown. You've got news stories now that I'm beginning to think are way more uh, important and could become dark clown head 
dark cloud headlines in the market. Had a question about um, EY. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, let me just finish this up. I was asked, so what are you doing um, with your uh, subscribers? Well, um, what I'm doing is this. I've raised the stop on our very uh, and our longs, the intermediate term longs that we are trying to hold as long as possible. We are short the Dow, uh, the equivalent of about 26,180 or something like that. Not the best level because I was hoping that we would uh, uh, be able to get that peak D, but it was such a quick pullback. Uh, never got it. So, but we're, we're, this is still great. I mean, we're looking at short position going to stay in that short position, still have the very long-term long position from 2,290s. Yep, it'll be ameliorated if you have both, because if you have both, it's one, one against the other. But hey, that's the way I'm trying to do it. I think longer term, we're going to go to higher highs. Later, I'm very concerned with the peak E's and D's and F's in weekly, in monthly charts. I'll talk about them when I get back, and then I'll go to some questions. Basil Chapman, Tiger Traditions Hour, Dow's down 261. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the TAS Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I was asked about H-A-Y-N. Well, I asked about uh, different things, but uh, let me do this because it's, it's, it's very important. It's a stock that's acting extraordinarily well in this market environment. I don't know what the news is at 40.22, up 3.43. That's almost 10%. Hey, remember we spoke about it Friday. Tim wanted to know about it. Um, so I'm following up, and I said I like the action on Friday. It held well. You really want to see a follow through to the upside. Wow, not only did we get that today. I, oh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if this is some kind of a takeover story. Let me see what they say for news. Here we go. Let me, I must check on the time. I don't want to run out of time. A lot of good questions. 
and I, I really want to cover everything. So this is an important stock going up very strongly in a very, very bad market. Um, waiting for headlines, waiting for headlines. Okay, mid-morning update. Hey, international sees higher revenue in the Q2, in Q2 as 2 one 2018. Uh, okay, reports, international reports, uh, EPS 0.24. Okay. In trading, in trading, where does it go? Where did it go? Um, hmm. Top ships shut up 51%. Oh, very nice. Top ships, tops. And, uh, okay, down. Is that the best that it can do? Yep, that's the best that I can do. Okay, so it was an earnings report. That's great. So this is what I'm going to say. Remember on Friday, I said, yeah, this is the kind of stock you want to see because it's acting extremely well against a backdrop that is very negative. So if I'm looking at it, it goes A, A again, A again, A, B, C, D. I want to do this live. I want to, I want to show Tim something. Uh, 775. Look. In the Chapman wave, you find the lowest, most identified low, lowest bar. And then if it goes up, you want to call it peak A, okay? If that A pulls back sharply and there's another little peak below it, you want to give that one the new A. There it is. But the MACD and Stochastic are really improving, so it makes an almost an arch formation. Then it makes a little A right there, even though that's the low bar. The big low is the one that counts. So I'm putting another A over there. Then I'm going, I want to be as conservative as possible. I want to get to D rather before than late. In other words, it might be a C. I'm calling it a D, and there I am stuck waiting for a D, and it doesn't come. So you see this little double top here at 30, right there, 33.75 on the 19th of December of last year. And again, 33.75 on the 20th over the weekend. So that has to be C. Pulls back sharply. Now we've got a D. Is that an instant restart? I tend to be very strict here. I always make a little circle to say, keep it in mind. Now you want to start an alternate count because there could be an instant restart of PD, which would be very sure, uh, very um, positive. So now you go E, following the, the, the alphabet and sequence. A, alternate count. Wow, if that was another peak, that would have been good, but it's not. This is on the 20, on the 11th of January, 3616, 3618, so moving higher. That is F slash C. <clears throat> MACD is still good. Stochastic starting to pull back a little bit. F slash, what did I say, B or C? B. Now it goes to a G slash C. Now it becomes very important because it could be a G. The MACD is suggesting this is probably a G. The stochastic suggesting, whoa, it really is a failure pattern. Let's see what happens next. And lo and behold, it does fall. It falls from the 38 area to the th under 34. That's a big pullback. <clears throat> MACD just goes negative for a fraction. Stochastic pulls back sharply, and suddenly you get the good news. So this, I'm calling D for now because of the market conditions. I can change that later on. I'm calling it a D as if it was an instant restart. And it went to the D, and I put in a plus sign saying, just be careful here. So here, Tim, is what I'm going to say to you. Keep it in mind that this is an outstanding stock, good earnings, but I would not be surprised if it starts to consolidate with the general market. Three ways to play it. One is you could buy a call uh, February. I'd buy a March call. I'd buy a March 44 call. Um, and that's one way to do it. Number two, that's an option. Number two is I look at this and I say, that's really good action. It's at 40.15. It made a high today of 42.96. That's three points. It's almost like 8%, right? So I'm saying if it pulls back further, I want to start considering an entry point. But the monthly chart is only improving. It's not great. Weekly chart is much, much better. So I'm going to suggest to you, have a little patience. If this week, uh, you said, you, if I remember correctly, you had a little position on you were, you were trying to modulate and see how you can work that position through. So let's keep in mind, this is as if it's fresh. Would I buy, would I sell? Right now, it's a little difficult to buy, although it's outstanding action. It is earnings news. It will be back to normal tomorrow and move with the market. So I'm going to say to you, start a position on the long side between 36 and 35. It's a position. I would give it time and I'd give it price. I'd just say, that's my position. I think it's going higher over the coming weeks. Sorry, the coming months. Maybe not the coming weeks. 
And I just give it a little bit of time because I want to see if it's able to hold 34 to 33 support. If it holds 33 support all the way into two weeks' time, Friday, two weeks' time, in other words, a week from Friday, <clears throat> I would say great action. If it pulls back underneath, I would say handle the trade. You, know, you might have to have a stop or something, but give it a little room. This is very good action. So the other way, if you have nothing and you say, yeah, I, I like it, you could just start a very small position here saying, I've got to give it a three-point, some kind of at least a three-point minimum, um, some kind of a spread. And that would be a, maybe a three-point spread. Right now, just say, okay, 40.08. You, you crack 37 support, I'm out. I, I, I would prefer to say if you want to be in it and you're not in it, you could just nibble now. That's your really, that's your initiator. That's the one that says to you, is it going to be a great, because if it holds beautifully and actually rallies in the next two days, that's a great stock. Then you can start adding. But I would just give it a little time market-wise. That's all. As a chart, it's looking great. So here it is at 40.08. If you haven't, Start a little position, but this is your marker. This is the one that says, hey, I'm going to get a real good feeling. I have to go to a three-point stop, and let's look at it again maybe in four days' time at the end of the week. But I, I like it very much. The real starting position would be, I'd have to say, closer to the 37 area. I'd even try to have patience to get into the 36s. That's your real starting position. Next question I was asked, eyes. I love when, the, when a stock has the name of what it does. So this is Second Sight Medical Products, Inc., <clears throat> trading at 2.44, up 39 cents, a whopper of a move. It was on my list. I mentioned it in my, to my subscribers a while back, and then we did nothing. I think we did nothing. Um, <clears throat> it was chop, 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 and when it moves, boy, it moves too quickly. So you're either in and have to have a little bit of a wide stop, and you have to have a wide-ish stop, and then it moves high, or you're not in. I think it's going to make leg D <clears throat> above 2.55. That's the December week of the 15th high. It's pulled back to the dollar 60s. Now it's trading at 245, up 40 cents, up nine, almost 20 percent. Wow, that's tough. It's really good. Something's going on. Maybe earnings. This is another one. I'd wait for a pullback. Remind me again. We'll do another look. It is a good stock. Yes. Um, okay. Now what are we doing? So I said in the Dow we are we are short. Someone said, hey, if they want to know what you're doing, buy your Buy your newsletter. Yeah, okay, fine. But, I, you know, it's a, it's a reasonable question. They are down 258. Um, we've got a break coming up. That break will allow me, when we get back, just to run through some things that we have in my target, my, my technicians, sorry, in my <laughs> trader's corner, where we have all our positions. I'll be right. That's a champ. Target technicians out. Guys down 250. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So here's the two minute e mini chart down 17.50 at 273925. It made a, a low that was gave you a good um, peak A, failed brand new A underneath, then a B underneath, then a C, and then it makes a D. When I was on with uh, Tommy O'Brien at uh, 10:30, and then it pulls back, makes a cup formation. I never had a chance to do this because uh, we're running out of time. I wanted to say this is the Chapman Wave in my CD uh, book. Uh, introducing the Chapman Wave met methodology, there's a, a, a pattern that I call the drop bucket or the double top formation, chapter 22. This is just a perfect one. Look at this. See this? You got you go to, in this case, a D caterpillar way back in 2002. They go back and makes a double top and look look at the technicals failing as it did that and then plop. If it takes out the, the bucket, the cup formation low, it can do at least a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Whoa, look at this. Took out the bucket and made more than a one-to-one -to, -one to double to the downside. Question I had was, could you now, is this a double bottom? Could you add? I think it's too early. The market did a beautiful thing. It 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 gapped down and went much lower. And that said, those people over the weekend, they said, I've just got to get out. I've got to get out. I've got to get out. I got out. Then the market ran up to almost like minus eight, unchanged in the Dow. It went to plus in the NDX, and it went to, I think, uh, slightly positive in the, in the uh, E-mini futures. And then what happens? Those people that sold said, oh, geez, why did I do that? Why did I do that? And those people who were buying at the lows were busy patting themselves on the back. Market loves hubris. What does it do? It reverses. The people who got out and then said, gee, I got back in this, got out this morning and then said, oh, I'm, I'm too early. Maybe they even got out some of their positions. Now the market's down 254. And those people who were patting themselves on the back by buying the lows are saying, oh, and this is bear market phenomenon. This is exactly what you look at. And the VIX index is at 18.80, up $1.49. So I'd be real careful. Yes, you want to know the trading, this is good risk reward. Um, but I can tell you, I'd be scared of another double as we had to the downside as we had on Monday if two things happen. One is that, uh, for instance, Amazon made a round number high on Friday, um, fr on a round number high um, on Friday at 14.98 on the second. It closes towards the low, has a lousy day, goes under the line period, moving average, and then it has a pretty decent bounce. What does it do? It bounces up. It's at 14.46. Just is something to watch. Peak F slash B in the weekly chart. Amazon, these are the clue stocks. These are the ones that are going to tell you about the next big move. If Amazon in the next three days closes under 13.50, it's in for a sell mode in the daily. 
nothing yet in the, in the weekly, but at least the daily is starting to tell you, be careful. Just be real careful here. So we're getting back to uh, my, my the portfolio. So, yeah, we have um, we don't have our gold stock anymore, thank goodness, because now it's much, much lower. I just thought, you know, in this market on Friday, the gold should have gone much higher. It didn't. So, OK, gold's out. SMHs are really the big clue. And SMHs right now, the semiconductor market vectors index is down at 1%. 02.56 had a high of 1.856. It's a big deal. Six points down. That was a 80-ish percent. Um, no. What will happen is that if the semiconductors, which led the market on the way up and down all year, and all the corrections, everything had to do with the way the semis acted, had the same cup drop bucket formation, except it did close well above the 105.83 high of the 24th of November. If, in fact, there is a break to the downside, and I think the semis are going to give the big clue. I am worried. This is the first time I'm going to say this. I am very worried about the week, the monthly charts, not the weekly or the daily in terms of names, letters. But look at this, a leg E in the monthly chart of the semiconductors. The QQQ is only a leg C. That's still very positive, but very stretched. Um, the XLK, that's the S&P uh, S&P tech. Peak C, if there's no new high this week. But the the, the weekly charts are already what we have to watch because most of the dailies have given sell modes already. This is going to be a G. If there's a pullback further this week at 66.36, you start to see this thing trade near 64. I have to tell you, I'm worried because those monthly charts, uh, look at this, the S&P, SPX, S&P, what are we in? We're in a, in a leg D, probably a peak D. It's at D that other things can happen. Look at the sharp pullback from this D in the weekly chart. That says to me, just be careful. Don't think you can have this massive move straight up since the November elections of 2016 that you can't have um, some kind of a pullback that takes in time and price because of the politics involved now. We've got a lot of things going on. Now you've got... Dark clouds forming with headlines that could become important. So don't get nervous and carried away. Just be very professional. Put in stops, for instance. We are in reliance. You know, a, a massive move to the upside. Now it's having a pretty decent pullback to the downside. I just can't even remember now. Were we taken out? Yes, we were taken out for a 5% gain. Now we're out of it. I'm watching the steel stocks. Look at the SLX. The SLX, this is a pretty big pullback um, in terms of the relationship of the daily, what it's done. Weekly charts, yeah, you can expect this. Monthly chart says ho-hum. So, yeah, there are going to be some great buying opportunities, but don't. I don't think you need to be in a rush. So, well, let me just, so there was a question about the IBB. Look, peak F daily, and now it, it, in the 119 area, and now it's in a sell mode daily. Weekly chart is real close to giving a sell signal. Um, it's at 110.67. I would say 10 points down is, you know, taking away a lot of the fantastic gains that it had in the shorter term. So, so one by one, the different sectors are being impacted. Um, if we if we look at, um, so I'm not even sure, we don't need quite a number of our, our positions that we've taken profits in them. We're still long Bank of America. Look, Bank of America pulling back um, 31 81 right now, only down 15 cents after potential peak. G top, I, this is this is a high level consolidation. I'm not really worried about it yet. I I am concerned that it's going to give back some of the gains, but you know, big deal. I, I think this is one that's on my list. Leg D in the monthly chart. This is I I'm going to watch these real closely. But look at the XLF. That's lousy. Look, that's that's a much deeper pullback. So that says to me, be careful. Look at Goldman Sachs. Look at this, Goldman Sachs. Um, is down a dollar eighty-two. Made the peak C. Didn't even get to a D. Uh, something's wrong. But a leg F in the weekly chart. Hmm. This is something to watch. So, what I'm saying is, be very selective. And it, it, it's going to pay you to 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 keep in mind that within the context of uh, um, within the context of what we've been through, a pullback, even eight percent, twelve percent. Hey. You need it if you want to go the next step. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. When I used to sprint, yes, 100 yards, uh, you needed to breathe. But when you're in a marathon, the breathing is completely different. In fact, in the sprint, breathing is kind of important. 
in a marathon, how you breathe is perhaps even much, much greater. And that's the market. Look, straight up needs a bit of a pullback. A home, a Philadelphia housing sector index down $1.19 334. It was just at 368, 369 point, what was that high? 369.15 on the 24th. Let me see, 60 points. I would say 60 points, nearly 20%. In just two weeks or so, that's a that's a pretty steep decline. And that's to do with the interest rates. So sector by sector, something's happening. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Tech. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. Last March, the folks at Timers Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of The Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So, folks, here's the uh, two-minute e-mini chart. There's your uh, low of Truff F. Got a little bounce going here. I'm telling you that my eye says, unless within the next hour there's a trade that holds, I would even put it over for 20 minutes or more, above 2741 right now, holds above 2748. Wow, that's being too generous. 20, 2748 to 2750. If we can hold above that, we'll have a rally into the close. Wow, if there is no rally attempt into the close, there could be another last hour sell-off. That's now. Let me just do this. In the in my methodology, what I always look for, I've been speaking about it for a year. It's not happened at all. We haven't even seen it yet. Friday was the first time. If the volatility index closes high double digits, it's at 9, 1873 right now. It's holding well. If there is bad news pervasive in the market, that is that the market is perceiving whatever news it is as bad, even if it's good news, and if the futures open sharply lower, try to rally intraday and then close at the lows, 
you're in a bear phase. I'm just going to say that that's the way I always look at it. I think we're in that phase right now. Um, I don't see any way this week that we can make all-time highs. I don't know what could trigger it. I think that we're in this whole digestive phase. Just make it as simple as that. Um, we've got long positions that have been really good to us. I want to try to keep those, or we'll just get back into them if we take it out for a nice profit, not as good as it was last week. That's just the way it is. So we've got longs, we've got shorts, short the semiconductors, short a, 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 a home builder, and I'm not even sure right now. Yep, home builder's down sharply, so about 10% so far. Um, what we're looking at here is it's a rotational aspect as well. We've got to see the semiconductors and the uh, XLK, that's the um, tech sector, as well as uh, the QQQs, really start to take on downside activity because they've been the leaders all the way up. And you need that in sector rotation. That's the sector. Those are the sectors that need to digest in this big uh, um, phase, this digestive phase that we've just started from the 26th of January. So keep in mind, be cautious. I'll be back a little later at 4 o'clock to do the Tom O'Brien Show. Have a great Check out my, um, t my opening call. That's my daily newsletter, a very comprehensive newsletter. And I believe... Uh, uh, I believe that, yep, Steve's away, so, so it'll be a recorded show today. I think he's back tomorrow. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining Mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.